I'm Lola Mamanur with Voice of America Middle East, and right now I'm speaking with Kulsum Abdullah, who is the Muslim American female weightlifter from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, thanks for being with us, Kulsum. Thanks for having me. So you were worried, you know, concerned for a couple of weeks because you didn't really know um, the status of whether or not you'd be able to compete in the USA um, Nationals. So now that the International Weightlifting Federation has, you know, passed out their statement saying that you can compete, how does it feel now that, you know, you've basically had this major success? Well, I, I was really happy to found, find out because now it means I can go to other competitions. Um, unfortunately, the Nationals are next week, so it's a lot of last-minute preparations um, and it's a little bit hectic, but I'm hoping that everything will just fall through and once I get there and compete, it'll be fine. Um, when this all started, I think you mentioned that it started in around October or November, um, which is when you were, you know, first... I guess your first appeal was rejected. Um, when did you reach the point where you thought, you know, I've had enough of this and I really want to take matters into my own hands? When, when, when did you reach that point? I, I don't think I've ever, I actually reached that point exactly. I think that um, after the first competition, I wasn't really sure if about doing something. But then when I had talked to some friends who knew lawyers, and they said, well. I mean, you might have a chance, and I thought I would write that letter to USA Weightlifting. Um, so it was just something I tried, and then you know, when they said no, and their reasoning was because of the IWF rules, um, you know, I asked around about that, and then from asking around, um, the care found out about my story, and so they said, well, you know, we'd like to help you and work on your behalf. So I thought, well, it's not going to hurt to try. So. Um, Basically, this whole time it was just something that I thought, whatever happens, I'm just going to try and just see. And then when the whole, you know, the press release went out and the press found out, um, and then CARE talked to the USOC, and then they talked to IWF, that's how my appeal even got to them. And then I was able to submit a presentation, um, which basically was just trying to explain the clothing and different options and such. and. Um, you know, before they made the decision, I just thought, I'll, I'll see what they say. And, uh, you know, then they made it at the end of the meetings, and I was pretty happy. And so that was pretty much it, I think. I was just, I knew it was just something I had to try. It was their, you know, it was going to be just their decision and up to them. Right. You have gotten a lot of media attention in the past several weeks. Uh, was that something you were expecting? Um, and do you think the media attention has helped your cause in any way? I expected a little bit, but not that much. Um, but I think, yes, it did help because a lot of people didn't know about the situation, and I think it brought a lot of awareness. And um, I think that it helped as far as being able to get my appeal to the IWF because I wouldn't have been able to um, get it to them myself. Okay. Um, we've heard a lot recently about, uh, you know, other governing bodies that haven't been as. Um, I guess, inclusive in a sense um, compared to the IWF. I mean, for example, the International Football Federation Association, FIFA, uh, prevented the Iranian women's soccer team from playing against Jordan. Um, and, you know, there seems to have been a number of cases where this has come up in the past month. So do you, what's your take on that? You know, is that discrimination? Is that a trend in your opinion? Um, and do you think that your case is sort of a rare exception to to the trend, if there is one? Well, I think there's a couple of factors. I mean, one is that there haven't been that many Muslim women that, you know, covering the head and the body and everything um, that are participating in sports. I think it's, 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 that's kind of a new trend as well. So I think that a lot of governing bodies or sporting associations just haven't maybe considered it. And, um, but I know of examples where they have allowed women to cover like in the track and field um, and then I I'd heard about the boxing federation they're sponsoring a team of, of women from Afghanistan to compete you know and some of them are going to be wearing the hijab and the head covering and such so um, as far as the, the FIFA example I don't know exactly what happened with that because from what I was aware it seemed like they were able to wear it and then something happened so I, I'm not really sure 
Uh, so it seems like it's a mixed thing. It's not just something that's people are just saying no and it's negative. I think it's because it's just a new situation and some people are, hand, you know, sports are just handling it in different ways. I hope um, that people in general and the sporting bodies would consider these kind of issues so that they can include more people in the sports. I think it's something that would, you know, it would just be beneficial. Um, and I think it carries over into other aspects of life and you, that's a way to get people together. And I know some people, they feel, you know, this is something that's just changing the rules or changing the way things have always been. But if, if people could change their attitudes about that, that would be good. Great. Thank you so much, Kulsum, for joining us today. Okay, thanks for having me. All right, bye.